That's good news. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is a small crowd, but there will be a bigger crowd, I'm sure, thanks to Facebook and the, the recording from Zoom. So hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the third workshop of Thanatic Ethics, the circulation of bodies in migratory spaces. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Judith mustani -Barek. I teach within the English department um, here at uh, University of Valley and I'm a member of the research center, Emma. So I would like to give you a brief, very brief, you know, background and context um, of our Benetic Ethics project that is convened by Divisha Banerjee at the Education University of Hong Kong and co-convened by Thomas Lacroix, who is uh, at Sciences Po uh, Paris. And myself, and I would like you to tell you. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit about how it started, how it got connected to La Vignette and uh, Le Centre Culturel Universitaire, and how Archidaidis is our guest um, today. So, in fact, I've worked with Thomas Lacroix for quite a few years. He's a social scientist, as I was uh, saying, and a specialist of migration. And more recently with Vidisha Banerjee, who is a literary uh, scholar in South Asian studies, and she works more specifically on refugee graphic novels. And I'm a literary studies uh, scholar myself. I work in uh, post-colonial literature, particularly Caribbean and Indo-Caribbean uh, literature, diaspora, migration, and refugee literature as well. So sometime in 2019, the opportunity came to work on a collaborative project together. And it's not only um, that the themes of the Phonetic Ethics Project dovetail very well with our individual interests in postcoloniality, migration, and precarity. It's also that the project, as we have jointly defined it, pushes those interests further. And this is actually the miracle of collaboration and partnership, the work done together far exceeds the sum of individual work that could have been done. So we applied successfully for some funding from Vidisha's uh, faculty at the Education University of Hong Kong, and that is how Phonetic Ethics was born. So we started small, we're still not very big, uh, but the network was rapidly constituted and we had set up a series of webinars so that some of the scholars could present their work and enter in, um, into conversations and discussions. So workshop number one happened online in April 2021. Workshop number two happened on campus uh, a couple of months ago at the end of September, here in this same auditorium. And we were able to enjoy the direct physical discussions between scholars in the humanities and in the social sciences. And we were also delighted to uh, welcome the choreographer, Wanjiro Kanuyu, thanks to Alix uh, de Moran, as well as the documentary filmmaker, Amin Sami. We are acutely aware that it is absolutely crucial to have the physical experience of the encounters and conversations in flesh and blood mode, maybe I should say flesh and bone, not only because funding obtained must become funding used, otherwise it won't be granted anymore, but also because what is said and done in person in the same room, in the same space and time cannot be entirely replaced by what is online. It can be complemented and it is you know, complementary. We need to be close to it. We need to get together. We need to have the physical discussions. We need to be able to rely on institutional support and funding to continue doing our job, providing perspectives, producing knowledge, disseminating it. This is why the choice of the physical workshop has been made along with the streaming and the recording. Holding the workshops and academic events on campus in physical mode is also an institutional and political message. In this project, Thematic Ethics, um, we are speaking about the circulation of bodies, the bodies of the dead, which is very different from the dead bodies, which means we're also speaking about the living. We are concerned with bodies in both meaning of the, meanings of the term, dead and alive. In this respect, we're also acutely aware 
that the interdisciplinary nature of the project is crucial. In such a context as the one that prompted the thematic ethics project, steeped in political urgency and social awareness, it is indeed crucial to involve many disciplines, many people, scholars, artists, activists, in many capacities and other types. As an aside, if I may add something a bit more personal, I may add that something has to do with, you know, something that has to do with serendipity. I was in uh, South Africa a few weeks ago, just before the uh, Omicron craze, I promise I didn't bring it back. Um, I stumbled upon, I was in the Cape, in Cape Town, and I stumbled upon the Prestwich Memorial in Cape Town. And upon the play that was written by the playwright and novelist, Nadia Davis, What Remains. What remains is a fusion of text, dance, and movement to tell a story about the unexpected uncovering of a slave burial ground in Cape Town. The archaeological dig that followed, and how the city is still haunted by the memory of slavery and the unidentified bodies of the dead. The community of archaeologists, citizens, property developers, artists, politicians, along with slave descendants, very much came together at that time in 2003 when, this, when the, the burial ground was actually discovered, uncovered, and again in 2014 to reckon with that past and make the living more alive. A few hours ago, I was exchanging with um, Thomas and I have just come across the performance that was organized a couple of weeks ago at MoMA to create an elegy for the hundreds of unidentified migrants buried in mass graves in Sacred Heart Cemetery in Brooks County, Texas. Freya Powell in Only Remains Remain uses the structure of the Sophoclean chorus to explore the mourning potential of voice and body on stage as a complete experience. So this is our transition from slavery to contemporary migration, and we're still concerned, always concerned, with the creation of common ground. This is also obviously particularly true in Arcadi's case. You may have seen Necropolis online and the talks that he gave online. He is in this room today with us. When you see the play, when you see Necropolis, I can hardly call it a play, but let's call it Necropolis. When you see uh, Necropolis on stage though, it is a radically different experience from how you see it online. Literally, he puts the bodies of the, of the migrants, the bodies of the, of the dead on the table. It ceases to be then only a topic on the political agenda or on the screen, be it on your phone, on your computer, or on your television. It is there for us to see, to remember, to live with, it gets inside us. We feel very honored that Arcadi showed interest in the Thanatic Ethics uh, project right from the beginning when it was launched and when it started in 2019, 2020. The connection between Archivisitis and the Festival Montpellier Dance was already there. At the time, it was a residency. The connection between Arcadi and La Vignette was also there, and as performances had to be postponed because of the sanitary situation, it gave us the time to develop the links between the research centers at the University of Valérie and between scholars who got interested in the project. We got time to connect the dots. This is how my colleagues Alex de Morand and Marianne Goujon got implicated uh, in the project and how this round table today finally took shape. As you know, it follows up on the other workshop that took, took place this weekend and which we are now going to hear about before the conversation with Akadi. So uh, if you're interested in the, in the Fanatic Ethics uh, project, stay tuned for the forthcoming events. Everything is posted on the Fanatic Ethics uh, website. There's a call for papers that is still running until 15th of December. Next event is going to be an international conference uh, taking place in Oxford, organized by uh, La Maison Française. Um, uh, in Oxford, there is also a link 
to the, the YouTube channel uh, of the Fanatic Ethics uh, Project and all the previous webinars and the recordings of workshop number two have already been posted there. So finally, I want to take this opportunity to thank once again our partners, British Energy and Thomas Lacroix. The, the Education University of Hong Kong is the primary funder of this project, but funding has also been provided by the University of Valérie Montpellier Trois, obviously, the Research Center Emma, the Department of English Studies, the School of Modern Languages, UFR2, and the Conseil Scientifique, Science Le Board. And last but not least, this third workshop would not have been possible without Le Théâtre La Lunette and its director, Nicolas Dubourg, Le Centre Culturel Universitaire, and of course, not without the Research Center, Vira Vampena. So we are now looking forward to hearing more about the workshop that was organized by La Lunette and the PCU, and that happened with uh, Arcadi this past weekend. I've heard that it's been a pretty intense um, experience and moment. I will pass it on to my colleagues, Alix uh, de Moron and uh, Marianne Grujon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, as one of the dots, that is one of the researchers who got interested in the project at a later stage, I am really very interested now in welcoming did you want to join us alex as well yes um, a few of the participants in the workshops which took place at the, the university at le théâtre la vignette over the the, the the weekend it started on friday so i'm going to ask a, a lot of very naive questions not having participated myself uh, wondering what happened <laughs> exactly um, and perhaps asking first of all uh, if you could uh, describe uh, how it went on, how you met on Friday, how many were you, and uh, what were the first um, contacts, perhaps? I'm um, one of the students, the past student of the, the, the first semester in marketing in Montpellier. And, and so I attended the workshop on, um, on the Friday. aim of uh, knowing uh, more about uh, the work of RCD. And at the beginning, um, who is <laughs> that? <question>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh yeah, we yeah, we started by knowing more about Arcadi's work with him presenting uh, many of his uh, pieces and of his processes uh, to his works. Uh, we also met each other. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, so as can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So as uh, she said, we started with um, Knowing more about Arcadi's approach to to work, to dance, and to how he combines the document and the archives with his uh, performances, and then uh, the next days were about discussions and some auto reflections. So we gathered documents that mean something to us. And that are from, as we said, um, external, um, like it's. Yeah, we agreed on uh, another definition of the document um, for this work to be uh, not part of our personal uh, belongings or life. Uh, and, um, and not from the artistic um, field, yeah. Like something that's not the political context or social context that we live in. And, uh, can, can you give us an example perhaps of all those objects or artifacts? What was yeah, it? so uh, there were people who uh, got documents for their work, for their performances, something that they already worked on, things that are 
more personal than others. Some people talk about their a nightmare and, mm -hmm. and um, in relation to to a, a political context that they live in. Me, for example, I talked about the explosion, the explosion, and and, and you started from the video that is on the internet, but it's not a video that you yeah. recorded or you're a, a, a member of the family. So it was, uh, yeah, as you said, an external document. Uh, I worked on first um, a list of uh, uh, more than 100 victims of uh, the 17th of October of October of the year uh, 1961. In which, uh, on which took place a massacre in Paris uh, against uh, Algerian and Muslim uh, persons. So I started on this work because it's a part of the performance I've, I've worked on. And then I decided to, to change, to, to see how to articulate the process through a new document. So I, I've chosen. Um, uh, how to say a uh, weather forecast? Yeah, a <laughs> weather forecast of the day of my birth. <laughs> and yeah, maybe oh, that's, that's the question. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very interesting what you're saying about this dialectic between something personal and something from a different perspective, which is outside. Mm -hmm. So something which touches you, but the way it was perceived by somebody else, I guess, or by the outer world, right? So is that related to um, perhaps uh, the vision uh, of uh, Arcadis, uh, um, how he wanted documentary performances to, to work? Was it? Um, the, actually, he, um, he mentioned also that he doesn't like to impose uh, kind of his um, ideology or uh, way of mm -hmm. uh, Processing his work, but he was like he um, showed us his works, and from that we could get some inspiration or get like a base to to begin from. And then uh, it was very free. It was a very free space, uh, but it was as well structured. So there were discussions. To by two like small group discussions in order to reflect on each other's ideas and documents, and that's how uh, our um, thoughts evolved on the projects that we may or may not uh, introduce. Yes, I would add that it was more of a um, um, how to say it was more about suggesting uh, a way of enter the document uh, through his work uh, and also through all the discussions he had, uh, rather than give us like very precise and detailed hints on how to process. So I think we have uh, more or less figured out, um, all of us, uh, a specific way to enter our document and to, to, to dig into it uh, um, to to be able to embody something from it and not really um, how to say, interpret the document, but more to yeah, embody a part of it and through all the ways we could enter the document. Yeah, right. Not interpret. Yeah, that's very interesting. So not interpreting the document that is not imposed, not um, sticking something that you wish it to say uh, from the beginning, but see when you embody it maybe with your body, uh, how it may live on to become something else or how it uh, is perceived anew and uh, differently. Mm -hmm. Is it how it felt? Uh, or how it can be explained. Mm -hmm. Like how the document can be shown. Yeah, we also talked about, we, we use this word of uh, co-presence and co-existence uh, with the document, uh, being into this uh, state of performance or on stage. And this is also um, a key to, to work with the, with the document that we've got from Arcadia. 
So do you think, because you said uh, you, you were working yourself on something, on a performance already, uh, does it, do you feel that it has already had an impact on your way of working uh, for that? Um, it's actually a performance that, that was already done, mm -hmm. uh, but it has um, still uh, uh, gave me the, it, the um, it has um, helped me uh, see more in details uh, how I process uh, from this document to what to how I present it or to how it coexists with me on stage. And so um, I was really focused on what were my gestures uh, to my willing to present this document. And I figured out that my very <laughs> first gesture, and I'm really interested in this very first gesture uh, as a way to approach the document, it was not only to read it or to or to record it or or to count how many or whatever. It was really like it was a, a matter of pronunciation of all the names. Mm -hmm. And so I think I haven't uh, recognized enough this very first gesture before digging into the document as we did this weekend. Okay, so so far you've been talking about all the discussions you had and uh, all the uh, reflection about how to use the documents. I would like to know how you how you felt um, the artistic dimension of this workshop uh, worked or how it fit in. <laughs> um, I guess that would also fall into the uh, author to action. Um, mm -hmm. Things that we did because we come from different artistic backgrounds. Uh, maybe some of us are not even from an artistic background. Um, so, yes, I, I could say that this was also given to us to process um, in, in our own way and see how we, can, mm -hmm. how we can manipulate the document, maybe, or manipulate. The meaning of this document how can we show it how can we not show it what what we choose to show and what to not choose to show and uh, i guess that um, there was um, an importance uh given to, given to the discussions so i guess that in in the workshop we we discussed ideas more than we um, tried to show them in an artistic way. Mm -hmm. So we discussed like the pre, like the process that comes before getting into the performance and trying to do an artistic or an aesthetic uh, mm -hmm. representation of it. So that was something that we um, focused on in the workshop and actually that was very important. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Right, so the, if, yeah. if I can uh, add something to what uh, Yasmin just said, I think what was really interesting also in this approach was to be also transformed by the relation with the document as a way to, to be already into a state of engaging with this document as much as eternal or, or intimate that it can be. and. Um, for some of the participants, it was also a question that they had already engaged a relation with the document and came, it came already from a personal uh, inquiry and or for others to just uh, start from scratch with one document and see where to go from, uh, from that point. But the process in itself, and as uh, Arkady uh, puts it, is transformative to have this gesture already to, to, to go and find a source, an archive, and to try to uh, be in the co-presence with that document. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also I recall that we mentioned um, uh, the fact that we were all in the process of welcoming what the document is saying to us personally, because as we said, we we can't engage in the same way in the same document. So it brought like many, many, many layers of reading it, uh, like 
if it's a text, like reading it like uh, out loud, but, but also reading it through the eyes of the person presenting it, then through our feelings of what the, the person presented. And yeah, those many layers were, were really interested to, to listen to. And then when everyone shares his thoughts and what he feels about this document, another one comes and shares and then layers get added. So it's more about participation than really about presenting something to yeah. an audience, really. It's, yes. mm -hmm. And talking about discussions, it was not like the discussion with um, like we're talking about um, the surface of things. Like we got into the artistic uh, aspect of it, into the political aspect of it, into the personal aspect of it. Like it was a very profound kind of discussion because we took time to, to, to talk and to um, process these things um, with the lecture. Yeah, the, the word process keeps recurring. And so I guess it's, it's going to open up uh, onto something that uh, you will discuss later with uh, Arkady himself. But I guess it's the same process that takes place whenever a, a new project is launched and you uh, go through all the. Um, um, <laughs> Sorry, uh, all the all the different steps uh, towards the performance, and you are transformed yourself through through that. Uh, so, it really looks it sounds like something that changes you from um, well the experience you yeah, went it's through. Yeah, question of being affected. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we've been affected since we test, and uh, some people have also to to meeting because they felt they were. It was too uh, intimate for mm -hmm. them to, to process. And in this affection, what I would like to say is also that uh, it's interesting to see what is our relation to data through certain device as well, and how communication is made, or how we can discover. And it was in the example of um, of Yasmin very present the fact that people were related to uh, an event very close to them through their mobile phone up to the moment everything exploded and they were themselves you know into the situation and uh, and that was also you know this question of uh, uh, what it is to uh, to uh, consider an information or a document through your own eyes, through your own gaze, and uh, and to have a direct contact with it, or to have a sort of distance. Mm. Right. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me of another uh, tension which I feel is bet between uh, um, something which is a political commitment, if you want, and a new word that I feel artists are using more and more, which is engagement. And I feel that when you commit to something, you, you stand a little more outside it. You have this distance from, the, from uh, something that you want to share, you want to present or talk about. But then when you engage, it becomes something uh, which you have to share and which you have to feel in your own body. And I feel, I have this feeling that more and more artists are into the, this political engagement. So it's a new word that takes over, if you want. I've, I've seen it more and more, so <laughs> I think it's a trend. But yes, uh, it's, so it does correspond to what you're um, describing here, this experience that transforms you. So how difficult was it? <laughs> Emotionally, physically, or is it, or just you know? Um. Um, yeah, I would say for myself, like I, um, at some point, I decided not to work further on this list I mentioned uh, because emotionally, I was like, okay, I know I have, I already have uh, a long relationship with this document, so I would not keep. Um, trying new things with this. Uh, so yeah, emotionally, I had to, to stop it at some point. Mm -hmm. Physically, I, it's different. Um, 
I think uh, with the second second document I choose at first, um, uh, I felt I reached a limit uh, because so in the in the process and everything, I I decided to look at it uh, with the weather forecast. forecast. <laughs> To look at it like many many times and um, after a while this limit has disappeared and I don't know I um, my view on how my physicality could engage into being present with this document has widened uh, thanks to all of the conversations again we had and uh, thanks to sharing um, different uh, um, I don't know, doubts and fears also. Uh, so for this, at first, I, I was feeling like, okay, maybe I should um, copy this uh, movement of uh, presenting and everything. But then uh, something appeared as a territory. And so I decided, and I, I we didn't um, try this, but uh, I think I'll be more into it um, to, to take this um, map of friends and to to maybe walk on it or run on it, uh, depending on how the present paper is uh, showing all of this, and to relate it to the body weather um, practice. And so this physically, um, how to say, I felt a shift uh, on it being just into my body, like just to, to copy it in my hands or my positions or being standing or not. It has shifted from this position to a territory on which I would like to experiment more. And yeah, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but this, yeah. was, this was really present for me physically. Outside your body. So yeah. from inside to outside yeah. again. So mm -hmm. this <laughs> movement. Thank you. And in my case, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. from the first part of her answer, because um, I guess it was the yeah, definitely. The first time I'm engaging with the documents that were like um, shared all over the media, um, the documents, the videos of the explosion and the few minutes before the explosion. So I guess on an emotional level, I the workshop was an opportunity for me to to engage or to try to see them from an artist's or or researcher's uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a bit bizarre because, not bizarre, but like the fact that I'm not in Lebanon, but I'm seeing it as um, like from, like from a distance now. So other than the distance between me and the screen, there's the distance between me and the, and the event or the space that where the event happened. So yeah, there's this question of space and distance and the question of, um, my memory because the document is not something that is uh, far from me. So it's an event that is not personal, but it's something that I uh, I was not there actually, but it's something that happened on the space where I was. And uh, so there was the document as an archive, the video, and there was my memory as an archive. So there was this. Thank you. Do you want to answer that question as well? No, not really. It's, 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 so you've been um, repeating uh, the, the, a few of the tensions that I feel are at the heart of the workshop and at, at, the, uh, at the heart of uh, the work of uh, just the way I uh, saw it as a, as a, a spectator, um, this tension between inside and outside, the way something which is a material becomes material because you you really engage in it and you um, create a, a relationship, a new relationship with it. I don't know if you can call it a relationship once it's inside you. It's not a relationship anymore. It's really part of you and it makes you grow. And at the same time, it's something that you want to share. So uh, it was not part of, the, a part of the workshop, but maybe that's a transition to the next uh, uh, step of our meeting tonight, which is uh, sharing with uh, with Arkady um, and, and his work. So the second step after the process of creation, how to share that feeling with uh, an audience who has not been part of 
the creative process. So, well, thank you very much to all of you um, for sharing this very interesting workshop. And uh, I'm going to ask Arkady to join us now. <laughs> you, you can, I don't, I don't know if you want to stay or if you want to. <laughs> Up to you. So, so let's continue. I will introduce the conversation with Arkady. It's an ongoing conversation we can say because we met in uh, 2017 and we've been uh, having these moments, public moments, but also uh, more private uh, exchanges around uh, some texts that we wrote together and uh, also, um, the proposition that Arkady has written for his PhD. Um, as a choreographer, as a performer, uh, Arkady has been born in Belarusia and it was still part of the Soviet Union in uh, uh, 1979. And he migrated to his parents in Israel at an early age and he's now based with his work in France. But we are here tonight to discuss about the performance Necropolis, which has been given in Montpellier during the last edition of the Festival Montpellier Dance in June uh, uh, 29, and was originally uh, programmed in uh, 2020, but due to the pandemic, uh, Necropolis had the first version that I had seen also online that has a uh, uh, Judith pointed it, it's a totally different experience to uh, see the online version and to be in the room uh, with uh, this performance. Hmm. So, uh, Necropolis is an intermediate piece which is uh, using computing data, Google Maps, as, uh, and specialization as well as a tool to identify dead bodies from refugees decomposing at the bottom of the sea. And um, it's both an artistic and an activist process, which extends the actual performance, inviting all members of an audience to be also the part of a common data research, testifying about the deaths of the Jewish migrants, locating the circumstances and the location of their base as well as their grave, if it happens to be such a place. So it is up to any civilian to be part of Necropolis as a transformative process, the last being able, once a grave site has been identified, to walk into it and to perform a very personal ritual to mourn the dead. But beforehand, the question is also to open one's eye and one's mind as a spectator to unleash the reality of a mobilized phenomena, which is more or less reduced by the media to the so-called migrant crisis. And the, the crisis, the response to the crisis by Frontex and by the European states is to suppress once part of the humanity, the possibility to, uh, to be mobile and pushes men, women, and children for economical and political reasons to risk their life in order to join the promised men of Europe. Why, if the European countries, instead of constantly threatening the law, reinforcing their borders, and being technically creative in order to stop the crossing of refugees were actually confronting the fact that this situation is the consequences of centuries of imperialist and massive colonization of the southern countries. As an artist, 
and a researcher and as a migrant himself. I can say that has always been living with conflictual situation, starting in its own country, either Israel and embodying himself the violence of invasion perpetrated by Israelis against Palestinian in archive, or using this topic narrative to consider the progressive and frightening dehumanization of border control in Europe in Paris. As creating, creating a documentary theater, the idea is providing evidence using documents, field footage, or existing archive. For him, choreography as movement analysis is a way to investigate social and political content. In Necropolis, this time, Arcadis Aides and his team have engaged with a forensic inquiry. To start with the list of United for Intercultural, Intercultural Action, reporting tens of thousand human disparation, to participate with experts, anthropologists, pathologists, historians, essayists, and human rights organizations to collect data about the mass of those who were actually claiming as living bodies the right to follow their own trajectory and as dead body, the right to be buried and to be mourned. I would like to start with a question about the political and ethical action, which is to perform an autopsy, and I'm going back to the roots of the word autopsy, as a critical examination for excavating memories and for interrogating our present history. So my colleagues, my colleagues, introduction and thank you for uh, uh, our ongoing conversation in the former audience who are here in the room. Um, uh, first, uh, first of all, to, to connect to the previous uh, conversation, I think uh, as we experienced with the um, uh, with uh, with um, participants in the workshop, um, I myself start from a document uh, in, in my in my recent projects. This is the the, the starting point of Necropolis, uh, as well as you mentioned, with the list of uh, that's produced by uh, United for Intercultural Action, um, and the the time. Well, it was found in the in the workshop, which was three days. Uh, uh, I think in in, um, in my process of engaging with such a complex uh, document, uh, it extended to several years actually. And, and the process of creating um, Necropolis, which is not finished yet, it's it's an ongoing uh, um, uh, work. Um, as it is reflecting on a situation that has continued, um, extended to, to to very long time of reflection, and uh, like like uh, all the participants mentioned, uh, the the first the first gesture is to is to, is to look and, and to see what um, what is there in any the document that is chosen. And when you look at the, at, at the list of United for Intercultural Action, so I, I would just give a context. This organization started to collect all the existing information about uh, migrants' death at the borders of Europe since 1993 uh, until uh, around the, um, 2013. This document contained uh, information about uh, uh, around 3,000 deaths. And now uh, we are seven, eight years after the list uh, contains information about uh, more than 45,000 uh, deaths. Uh, this list is not complete, uh, so it is only partial, partial documentation uh, uh, of what is existing in the media, but we know that, that uh, the actual number is uh, 
this double. And so we are getting closer to, to around 100,000 people that are, that are dying in the last uh, less than 10 years at uh, borders of Europe. And what, what was striking when looking at the document is actually that 99% of um, the, the people that are mentioned uh, in the list are mentioned as not identified. So uh, the, there is uh, basically no, no names um, to thousands and ten thousand uh, people were mentioned uh, dead in the list. And this was uh, the first, uh, I mean, very present uh, type of information that, that came from the list, which, which led to a series of questions that brings uh, this, this idea of uh, uh, forensics and interrogation into identity, which is actually not, uh, not known, um, at least on the paper uh, of, of the list of names. And this made me to, uh, to initiate uh, discussions and meetings, uh, including, uh, as you mentioned, people from many different fields, uh, until arriving also to uh, the, the forensic unit of of the Red Cross in Geneva, and uh, with this, with, with the questioning, basically what I see in the list. And so, where are the names? Where, where are the identities? Uh, um, and uh, and also in the, um, questioning the overall um, uh, relations to to the to the bodies that that are documented in the list. Um, and um, surprisingly, and not surprisingly, I mean, Europe simply, simply was Latvian war, have created a set of rules which are uh, uh, protecting the rights of the dead to be uh, identified. Uh, so if a European citizen, or if, if a body is found on the European soil, they're supposed to be uh, a certain <coughs> set of uh, um, procedures that should be applied to, 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 to this body, but uh, as I learned, uh, this this procedure are not performed in the bodies uh, that are washed to uh, to the shores of Europe. So, uh, so, um, so that the people that the list documents are uh, deprived from their rights not only in in, in their lives. Uh, but uh, this kind of um, deprivation to, uh, to, to a set of rights and is, is continuing into, into the death. And, and therefore, uh, coming back to, to autopsy and the collection of, uh, of data from a body, it, it felt uh, that, it, that, that it's, uh, it, it's a necessary gesture that is not being performed, and therefore, it's not performed uh, in the actual world, uh, I would actually, I, I need to perform it also on stage. Okay, um, but the question of how to put this on stage come to come at stake now, I think, and um, and many attempts have been uh, done uh, through visual arts, for instance, to testify about uh, this phenomena, but more rarely through theater, even though theater is the right place to be with ghosts, I think. But uh, the dispositive in, um, in Necropolis is uh, repro reproducing also uh, other dispositives, such as the surveillance room, where two operators are manipulating data through the screen of that computer, and they are facing a giant image of a uh, Google Earth, which is actually the area of view where, uh, of the city where the, the theater stands. And uh, zooming in, the audience is able to discover the exact location of where they are actually in presence, in presencia, as you said. And zooming out from a bird eye point of view, they discover uh, from a distance persons' territories as the camera 
is zooming out and try to approach different pieces of land up to the exact coordinates of a graveyard. Then on screen you have new uh, information which appears, which are data, the name, if there is a name of uh, the, the, the dead person, age, citizenship, and the circumstance of the death, which is uh, for the first case trying to escape uh, police. This distanciation of the gaze, which is actually uh, the one which is really uh, from a bird eye, is counterbalanced with the video, who is taken at a human distance this time by an anonymous person walking into the cemetery and uh, holding the camera at chest level, like entering the space up to the grave itself. And for me, the sound of the respiration entering the theater just refers also to the spectator who is both um, static position, but is in a in a way a sort of encapsulated in that uh, in, in that scene. And by looking from his static point of view, he is also um, in my sense, um, discovering there is an equality of position. And that is maybe, maybe for me the, the moment where you can introduce this idea of a social kinesthetic and why uh, you are creating documentary choreography. Yeah, I think um, you mentioned that the surveillance like um, is positive. Um, uh, and like also the, the passivity, let's say, of the position of, of gazing of the, of the audience uh, uh, watching the, the, the walk through a giant cemetery, which is basically European territory, or at least this is what we claim in, in the work. There is a, a parallel cemetery that we should uh, acknowledge, which is continuously accumulated with more and more bodies, uh, bodies who are actually buried and bodies who will never be buried, but uh, uh, lost on the way. And this, um, this kind of dispositive also tries to, 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 to touch upon the, also the problematics of our position the ones that are able to survey, the, the ones that are able to uh, investigate some, someone else's death, which is <laughs> already in its base a very privileged situation. And so uh, we are living, that are uh, in investigating the dead. The work uh, tries to uh, problematize this uh, uh, relation, and it's in the beginning, uh, in the end, in the, in the text which opens the show, it claims that we are the dead, mm -hmm. that we are already dead and, uh, uh, as the European community, and only the, one, uh, only the people who are uh, dead are really accepted to our society. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is a kind of provocation, but it has a very, um, a very uh, true or actual event that is referred to, and this was the event that the first, uh, in 2013, the first uh, big shipwreck that, that drowned in the Mediterranean, where there was more than 300 people on board who, who died. And um, uh, the, um, I think the, the, uh, one of the ministers of the Italian government were, uh, uh, granted citizenship to the people who died. Mm -hmm. uh, and what, what, what is less mediatized that uh, people who survived was uh, uh, put in a, in a camp, uh, overcrowded camp. So this kind of provocation, uh, or this kind of piece of information led, led us also to think uh, uh, of, of who is actually granted access to, to this territory and who is accepted as a citizen. And it's actually people uh, people that are dying at, at, at the shores of Europe are, are much more easily accepted as citizens than people who are uh, 
dragon to collide. So all these kind of problematics of, of, of our position from, from where we are as gay men, this is the, the, the privilege of investigate, the privilege to, to wander and visit this uh, city of the dead, it's kind of problematized from this, um, um, this positive. Because the, the surveillance devices are monitoring these people while they are trying to approach Europe. I mean, the Mediterranean Sea, as we all stated, is one of the most surveyed territories uh, in order to monitor who is granted access to, to the city of the dead. Um, yes, we touched upon this question of. Um, yeah, technology and uh, creative technology and the document that I had chosen uh, for the workshop was a letter from uh, Boris Johnson to Emmanuel Macron uh, on the uh, 25th of November before the last uh, catastrophe in, uh, in Calais. Um, Mapping the, the tongues of the deceased immigrants is also a way to place the stones for an architecture and to make also appear this uh, invisible city. But uh, I think uh, well, you mentioned uh, the, the phrase at the beginning of the performance, and uh, I wanted to speak with you about um, the narrative, which is also underlaying the performance, and uh, you work with the uh, dramaturge Bobricic to create uh, a narrative and to re reinvent also uh, some fragmented story, which uh, was actually the stories of each uh, dead uh, person. But um, there is also this voice who is guiding the audience uh, through uh, the alley of the cemetery and uh, through the liminal space, like a little bit Dante is uh, guided by uh, Virgilio in uh, the inferno of, uh, of Dante. And I was uh, thinking that uh, this voice had a very uh, important uh, role into the performance giving also uh, the, the right to speak or as a critique Christina Cassani will say this person are eloquent and giving honor to uh, to the dead by giving their a voice you're also using mythology and um, uh, through some uh, a personage such as uh, the niece of Leviathan or even uh, the golem who will appear at the end of uh, the performance. In Talos, you also use the, uh, uh, the myth, the, the ancient myth of uh, uh, Talos as a robot defending Crete against invaders. But I think this reference to mythology have also the virtue to uh, deconstruct the myth of uh, Europe as um, a civilization and also to question its origin as a storytelling. So how did you build this narrative to perform it? Yeah, it's, uh, maybe first I, I, I can give a contextualization uh, for the ones who didn't show the work um, as we also discussed in the workshop, I and I tried to for the participants to, to find a way, an embodied way to engage with the, with the document. And and this was kind of a central um, question when we discovered the list of the night. And, and actually, to make a, a very long story a, a bit more uh, short, uh, the, the the actual gesture that we are performing uh, is. That uh, com coming in proximity to actual graves of migrants. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's an embodied practice or, or a quest to come as close as possible to the, the bodies, the actual remains of the bodies of, uh, of people who lost their lives to come to this territory. Um, so, so there is a very 
embodied activation of the list. We're actually starting from the list wherever we are geographically. We're looking at cases that happen around the, um, the, the, the place where we are physically. So we point uh, deaths of migrants, and we're not only looking at, at, at the, the kind of the classic definition of borders. But uh, migrants are, are dying everywhere in Europe, not only at the sea, not, this is not the only, uh, uh, I mean, they die also when they are the brief uh, health uh, 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 care. There, are, there is a lot of suicide. There is a lot of uh, different deaths that are um, happening, happening continuously in, in all around Europe. Um, so, so this 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 gesture of uh, of coming close uh, to to the bodies of people who are dying uh, is a fundamental a kind of gesture that allows us to map the properties. So all the visits are, are uh, it's actually not the cemetery that pinpoint, but each grave is pinpoint. So when uh, we're visiting, like you see uh, uh, in, in the image. Uh, uh, behind a, a, a mass grave, basically, each uh, we, we map each uh, grave in order to uh, uh, to properly map necropolis. So the, these are the, the, the stones of, of the city. The the, the, the gravestones are, are are constructing the city of the dead. Um, and, and as you mentioned, in, in relation to the narrative, I think we are, um, we were um, also also kind of um, uh, unleashing uh, um, uh, um, other moments in history where, where where this kind of death is, is happened, and I think it's. Um, I mean, there are many, uh, and, and, and there for sure will be many more others. So, so there, there was this uh, desire to to put it in a in a, a timeline, in a timeline, but also in in a, in a, in a certain way. How do you say? Um, um, biblical, uh, mythological uh, narrative. Uh, perspective, which which are uh, unleashing other moments in history and future moments in history. So so uh, it's uh, uh, it, it's somehow the, the human tragedy uh, uh, to to recall also uh, the Greek tragedy, but that's also a tragedy. Um, so. Um, and yes, of course, when we're talking uh, also about the role of history, uh, the, the, role, the role of Europe in the, in the creation uh, of, of, of this crisis, right? It's uh, uh, um, like uh, I mentioned in the workshop uh, the writing of Ariana Zulai when, when she says that uh, um, the people who are coming to Europe are actually coming to claim back their goods. And it's actually an exodus, actually coming back to where your uh, own objects are musified, uh, stolen goods from all, all around the world that are kept on this territory. So I think the, this kind of interrelation between uh, Europe and the world and the role that Europe plays in a certain colonial uh, uh, evolution of the, of the world was, was important to include in the in uh, in the performance, uh, so to uh, to to um, to unleash more ancient ghosts uh, uh, and to uh, to talk to the future ghosts also. So this is part of uh, this narrative. Are for me a very uh, important, and it's also a sort of a poetic that uh, uh, goes back. Effectively, to ancient time, and I was uh, listening this morning to a uh, uh, historian talking about uh, Homer, Odyssea, 
and uh, how uh, the, the poets, the group of poets who are named Omer, were also interrogating their time and their political of their time and uh, the anger of Ashir, who led to many deaths of the Antigua. And, um, and by using these different uh, narrative, I mean, through the footage, uh, through uh, this practice at uh, a human level, which is to go and to visit any grave that you can find and to look on the map. Um, we are, as bodies, also at the intersection between uh, all this information. And I think this, um, this, uh, this is where we need also choreography, as um, Susanna Foster pointed, as a media between the media. So there's both the performative body of the performer who stay in, uh, in this uh, sort of uh, neutrality, first as an operator, and secondly as uh, medical assistants or uh, 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 and the, the body as uh, the, the spectator which is also has to question his own role and his own situation so maybe you could maybe uh, uh, try to explain uh, to us uh, what we mean when we, we were talking about uh, social kinesthetic and this way to use the body as a medium between uh, other media. Mm. I think that mm, there is a, let's say that the list itself, uh, the, 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 the list of United is a PDF uh, with all, um, with all its activistic uh, mission in it, it's already by itself a certain uh, flattening of a situation. It is a, it is a, pa it is a paper. Um, so, and, and there is a, um, a, 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 this way, when, when we encountered encounter the list, there, there was a necessity to put it back to, to, to certain sensorial or full sensorial engagement. How, how can we transform this this, this, this uh, white paper with the uh, um, letters into 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 uh, uh, into bones in this sense uh, in this case uh, in the, the remaining of all uh, this these people who are buried or not buried in, in Europe. And, and I think that the physical engagement with the document is, is, is very different in, in, in the different projects that I've um, uh, worked with. And, 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 and I think that the main question is towards the, the choreographic uh, gesture or the physical gesture. Uh, and and I think I mean you mentioned that were that were uh, as you mentioned there were drop drop dropouts uh, from, from the workshops and I, and I think that, that, that there is a very specific expectation from us to to, to immediately move and and, and uh, therefore when when I'm um, entering this uh, this uh, uh, workshop lab laboratory that I. I'm very hesitant towards this urge to move very fast because I need to find a very, very good reason why to do so. And especially when I'm looking at a, at, 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 at a, at a page uh, with uh, which documents and the silence of people who are who died. Um, so the, the, the way to engage or, or how, how we engage kinesthetically with, with this database or with any database is in the core of the of the, of the quest, let's say. And, uh, it's a very kind of heavy uh, decision to, to make until the, until the, you know, the process of me being a performer totally uh, 
and you can say even dancer to totally withdraw from this practice because it's it's really uh, irrelevant uh, in a sense when, when I'm looking at this list. But then uh, and, uh, another question arises: if if not this, so then how still this this medium this this kind of uh, a domain which claims the corporality and, and the performativity of the body can can still engage and still claim its relevancy in relation to a political situation. Um, and um, I mean, this is the, this is the starting point of, of uh, the recent works, but specifically crucial in this case where where we're talking about people who stop moving basically mm. or was made stopped by, by a system a system of order and fortification of this of the tenant. Yeah maybe it's time also to touch to the second part of the performance uh, because there's uh, at two parts in the performance or at, or let's say three parts maybe. And uh, I mentioned the surveillance room in the first part, but in the second place, we are into a mortuary and uh, the operators uh, are just uh, uh, putting uh, body parts, which are uh, in a decomposed state, but they are uh, carrying them and uh, placing them on a table um, and it is really a very uh, delicate way of uh, touching this body and uh, it's a very silent choreography uh, and the, 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 the aim of the choreography is to uh, recompose a body from different parts of leg, uh, thoracic, uh, thoracic cage, uh, a foot, and uh, just to, to just uh, create or recreate the impression of the uh, entire uh, body. And, um, and I was really thinking uh, while I was watching the performance to also uh, uh, the vi uh, visual shadows in the painting such as uh, the Rembrandt uh, lesson of anatomy, or I was thinking also of Jericho, who was studying corpses at uh, the hospital for his uh, main uh, picture, uh, the, the wreck ship of Medusa. And um, I wanted to, to, um, to discuss uh, with you because I see tact and the touching is also a question of dance and uh, to take care of these uh, bodies is also uh, uh, a performing uh, gesture I think. Yeah, so again to contextualize for the ones who didn't see, I mean we, we are um, I collaborate with a uh, sculptor whose um, um, who's aesthetic is uh, very much close to uh, real uh, body, body. Um, he works with, with various objects in silicon to, to create uh, human-like uh, figures and parts. So uh, indeed there is two uh, parts in the show. In the first one we are totally in the digital uh, surveillance uh, detached mode of Visiting this this uh, um, city, but then there is a, a very I would say dramatic shift into a theater, uh, and specifically into atomic uh, atomic theater, an atom theater, um, atomic theater, atomic theater, um, um, which is. I mean, this is how medicine also operates, or I mean, how classical medicine are, are given. You, know, you, you observe the opening of a body. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's, there's already a certain theatrality to, 
good to be distracted. Students are watching and the body doing tasks and body doing investigations. Um, so it's a quite a radical shift in the work, uh, and it's it's um, one could even say problematic shift because we are we are in the representation. But the something and, and this is the part where we, we many people not many but often we have at least ten of people live live in the room because. Yeah. The body is so. Yeah. The body mm -hmm. is it's so. It looks so real, mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, and it's clear. To, it's clear to, uh, to I think still clear for everybody. Some are doubting if it's real or not, but but there is a there, there was an attempt to 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 make the undoable almost to to uh, there is a kind of a, a, a golem or. A, Frankenstein gesture of, of, of trying to compose this, uh, to give his collective body a certain shape. Um, and the, the body parts are not fitting, it's not, it's not, uh, it's different uh, body parts, it's, it's a, always, a, it's a bit off, it, it, it's, it's, it's to construct in a patchwork of, of, of remains. Um, uh, but, but it also tries to un unleash a, a, a certain ghost, and uh, and and we and I think the voice also in the end it comes back, puts this layer uh, of of actually of us um, believing uh, it should be haunted by by, by uh, thousands of newcomers and. Already for a century, uh, uh, old comers to the city of the dead. Um, but it's also a, a kind of a, a theatrical gesture that actually collapses itself because the voice also said that if we were in the theater, this would be the moment to, to close the curtain, to, to clap, but actually we are uh, not giving it to you by saying it uh, actually. Dismissing this gesture of clapping because, uh, uh, and uh, there is a kind of a level of suspense that the audience is left with uh, when, when the ghost is actually being animated uh, and starts to move. And yeah, because at the end of the performance, uh, the, this body is disassembled, disassembled, uh, but reassembled body. Start to move on the screen as a puppet in 3D and uh, dancing his own uh, dance macabre. Uh, and I thought it's also very interesting to use this theme of the, the, the medieval age, which is the, the dance macabre, and which has also been visited in the modern age by a choreographer uh, from the expressionist movement, such as. Uh, Courtios or uh, Marie Wigman, uh, who just also uh, tried also to touch upon this question of uh, of death and how to figure that. Yeah, it's 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 um, um, as you mentioned, it's a it's a it's a it's a dance of a, of a ghost. Um, um, that, um, Tries to speak with us in, in, in a certain way. Uh, it, it basically, the, the, it, it just uh, basically the, the choreography of this figure is raised up. Mm. It, it tries just to stabilize yeah, and, and to stand in front of us and to look us in the eye. Mm. Um, it's a sort of Lazarus, as you mentioned, also the figure of Lazarus in the workshop. Yeah. shot, yeah. raising from the stones and facing us. Yeah, but then the, the voice continues and, and it says that actually every, and it, it brings back this idea of the city of the dead, which is all around us, and, and it says, it doesn't matter where you step outside of this place, uh, every stone, uh, you're, you're walking on bones, you're, you're walk, walking on this collective that is, that is constructed your privilege. Thank you. 
Uh, I would like also maybe to uh, share some questions with the audience if there are a question or reaction to uh, the discussion because I don't want just to put it uh, between us but also to open to your uh, remarks and thoughts uh, if you have on them. I know Judith and Marianne have seen the performance <laughs> with me, so maybe they have also uh, things to say about this uh, project, which is an ongoing project and which is also open to anyone to participate. But in fact, well, it was a privilege to watch the performance and with you because you mm -hmm. were that was quite something in itself as well. Procedures of the state, and 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 uh, um, they um, they propose to, uh, to to establish a kind of a, a new uh, field, uh, which which they call counter forensics. Counter forensics. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, which which actually a kind of dem democratization of the forensic gesture and, and taking the, um, the the right to investigate in in from the state, which has uh, affiliation to, to its own, to preserving its own system, let's say. Uh, and, um, and the counter forensic, uh, as they also put it, is, is not only taking the tools and the expertise in order to investigate human rights violations and uh, ecological violations, but also the activating the forum. Active, uh, activating the gathering uh, through the exposition of these uh, findings, which are usually how they do it, and, and this is also an attempt in Acropolis, is to, 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 to create another narrative to the official state narratives. And, and therefore, this, this, uh, this call for us, us to gather, which is also very relevant to the place of the theater, is, uh, is, uh, is at stake here because we, we have an opportunity as long as we can still gather uh, to, uh, to discuss the, the, our uh, ethics and our, uh, and our, and our duty as, as citizens of the, of the police in the city. Uh, and, our, uh, and our part in the creation of necropolis. When, when you say they, did you have a question? I don't know uh, what did I say? <laughs> At the beginning, you were referring to they, to forensic architecture. For, forensic architecture. For an yeah, yeah. So Charles Hannah. Yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, well, you, using the theater as a forum, uh, I would like to put the 
well, maybe uh, just uh, point something about that because uh, uh, we had also the discussion uh, on uh, what is politics or what is not poli political in the theater uh, during the, the workshop. And uh, you were mentioning the suspense at the end of the performance mm -hmm. where people do not applaud because uh, they, there is a sort of suspended time where everybody is also embodying what they just received. But is it for you uh, um, uh, this suspension also, uh, I mean, a, a defined gesture to leave everyone with its own uh, possibility to embody the situation? rather to uh, manage a discussion with the audience as it is often the case uh, after a performance to, to leave this uh, sort of suspension to uh, make its own work well i, I think this is um, the possibility of, of theater to create a suspension and, and it's not it's not i i'm not only related to this work specifically but I mean, we are, when we are in the theater, we are a bit suspended. And we are a bit kind of in, in this safe space, having the, the privilege to discuss in a forum situation the, our, our, our society. And as such, it is already a place of suspension. But then we, when, when we realize that, I, I think, at least from my point of view, it's also a, a very big responsibility. What do we do to stand for? What, what do we gather for? What, do we, what are we here to discuss? Uh, and, in, and in this sense, uh, when realizing that, this gesture that I uh, propose to the uh, paper has a very um, sort of big consequence to this gesture and the responsibility that comes with it. Uh, and I think, um, yeah, in many cases, uh, Oh, I feel it's often taken to like it, this, uh, this, this possible time together. It's also related to certain economic um, cycle that, that feels this has been kind of embedded in uh, a, a certain mode of production where we have to kind of shoot out uh, pieces of art as if it was a cookie. Um, and this is, this, this is the mode that that operate um, and uh, I kind of tried to resist it and uh, the Acropolis is now already a project of um, four years and it's ongoing it's, it's also to resist this kind of uh, systematic lightness uh, production Yeah, it's kind of you can open. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I guess that's why I think I'm trying to bring what the question of art and theater when it comes to bringing this paper. So I'll just start with a small example that I use. like when we had funerals. So the other day, when I was sitting in my home, I saw that my father was. Know, some morning song that is coming from the mobile, so I just went and checked and he was watching a funeral actually of somebody he knows. And in between, he's sipping his tea and he's kind of sitting around. So you had this luxury of kind of uh, watching the funeral without being part of the funeral actually. And the same person, if he is in the funeral, in the sight of the funeral, might be crying and so you are performing when you're there in the community and stuff like that. You're an artist, whether you like it or not, you know, how it is or not. Which gets revealed as soon as the funeral gets over. So the crying ends and everybody starts talking and the rest of the uh, talks and so on. So catching from there, I mean, it seems that we are all kind of in this realm of performance actually when it comes to performance. So from there, where we take to what Jasmine told about the art. Correct. Even I, I just kind of connected to uh, watching the Bombay Blast that happened in 2007 on TV, on 2008. 
So there's this huge uh, kind of uh, talking that is going around the block, and there's uh, uh, people being sad about it, and so on. And there's uh, and the people died. So, but at the same time, the question that comes to me is that at the same moment, or on the same day, probably, when this is going on, there might be, say, hundreds or two hundreds of thousands of people being dying due to class violence or due to uh, uh, class violence or uh, hunger deaths or any of these things. Touching upon the things that we brought in, like when the ship was sinking, you had some bodies which were dead and they were given their villages were given citizenship and the others went into the camps actually. So, so now the question that comes is when we choose to kind of uh, perform probably for a dead to bring them alive. Probably we are also sitting in a grave now. And it might be a grave that we are just sitting in now. And very clear. But we are not, we are not knowing it, so it's fine. So if we want to bring this alive, actually, as an artist, how do I become political? Actually? How do I talk for this dead body? Whether it's a migrant body that is dead, or it's say a person died out of racial aggression or a person died out of religious aggression. Would that person want to want me to represent that person in a particular manner or not? Would that person want to be alive? When they are alive, would they want to perform or rather be aggressive and uh, protest? So, I mean, where do I stand? As, is there a possibility for me to be political as an artist? And how much and how? Probably, yeah. it's a theoretical stance, right? yeah. which I guess what you're kind of going through, what I've heard from. Hey, but I think I don't think it's an easy question, uh, and it's in the heart of the um, project. I think, um, I mean, I think that the process of um, the process of mourning is eventually. Eventually, not it's not for the dead. It's for you to to to, to, to be able to continue. Yeah. And in in the heart of this cycle, like the, as as you say, we're already performing rituals in order to make our sense to our life. But how, how do we to continue? Is, is this? I don't want to differentiate. Uh, and I mean, there's many types of death, and some are more close to us, and some are more. Different to us, um, uh, but um, and just a, a parenthesis: uh, the, the Italian ship that uh, uh, that uh, sank, uh, the dead were given citizenship, not the relatives. The dead, the, yeah. the dead themselves. Yeah. Okay. So guys, so, were wow. this, this is the, the, the interesting twist okay. in the in, in the story. So the. So the it, it's a, it's again it's a gesture that was performed by the living towards the dead in order to be able to continue. Um, but okay, we could question now um, where all, all the eighty thousand others. Uh, how many how how many citizenships do we need to produce now uh, for for all these uh, tens of thousands of people? And do we continue? If this started, why not to continue? Why why not to keep track uh, as a state? As a, as a Europe, how, why not? To, why do we need the human rights organization compiling this list? Why not to take it as a collective and start to count who is dying and give to, to these people citizenship? And this is what we're trying to do, kind of in, in the work, because we are saying this is necropolis and, and all, all the dead, all this community of tens of thousands of people is included in this uh, in this uh, city. So. I mean, I think my answer is inside this this provocation of this uh, of, of this imaginary city. It's 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 for us. It's for us to to, to define our values and to, to understand how we are implicated in a system that causing this these deaths. Um, uh, another another layer of this is that the people um, who actually dead dying coming here. Their relatives cannot do this mourning properly. They cannot arrive and mourn on their graves because uh, 
there is many borders that are, that are preventing them to arrive in tomorrow. So, the, so there is a, a, a certain um, a desire to create a, a virtual space, like you mentioned, your father watching, uh, uh, watching, uh, and, and now in another step of the project, we are thinking about how to make access to the city of the dead from distance. So not only as European audience watching a performance, but we, we feel that the information that we gather and is, uh, might be relevant to somebody that actually looks for people. And, and just as a, as a side note, our gesture of going to the grave, um, we are uh, adding corrections to the list, the actual list of United, to the actual list of uh, the organization that collects the names, because they collect information from the media, which is then somehow forgetting this case. But when we are approaching and making uh, graves, we find names, we find people that were identified. And so, so our gesture is also to, uh, to make to, to make information available to people who might need it, crucially, in order to be able to mourn, in order to be able to uh, um, um, resolve a, a, a process of mourning or, or start the process of mourning. Because when you are when you don't know if a person that you uh, that you're relating to is dead or alive, this is not even allowing the process of mourning to start. Uh, yeah. Yeah, is very um, I want to make sure before I ask the question uh, if body, the body parts were are the actual body parts of someone who is dead. No, no, no. no. <laughs> there you go. You can't okay. do that. <laughs> Sculpture. It's a bar. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I will still ask the question. Yeah. Would, would you? yourself or would you think that an artist would have the right to do that to use a real body part? body part well it, it's been it's been done it's been done yeah. uh, it's been done uh, a good question yeah to put the second photo in I mean, uh, both these photos, just to give context to what you saw in the background, is, uh, is from the last visit that I, I, I took uh, one month ago in the, in, in the Turkish Greek border, land Turkish Greek border, so the Ebros River, which is uh, another border of death where, where a lot of people are dying. Um, and let's say this, this was my uh, most proximate uh, and count, uh, because actually this is this is a, this is a, a picture from a, the university hospital in uh, in Alexandropoli. Yeah, the freezer. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's a it, it's a fridge, uh, and it's a fridge uh, where where around twenty five bodies are kept up to uh, forty or six months, uh, waiting for. The name to be claimed before they are sent to burial. Mm -hmm. And we, we met the forensic expert who is, who is touching these bodies uh, as, his, as his practice, uh, ongoing practice for the last 20 years. So he touched all the, all the bodies that he found in that region and they're, they're going through the process. Um, I will uh, tell you the truth. I was terrified by this meeting because I, I knew that I, uh, I, I, um, I, I want to be, I want to be as close as possible. Um, and I'm not answering the, your question. It's just uh, um, I think that the, the gesture is, is to come in, in proximity um, and. Uh, and I think every, and, and that's why this is the part that, that you mentioned you know, briefly, where the, the performance is actually an invitation. An invitation for, uh, and, and the, the protocol of, the, of, the, of our search is appearing as the first thing the audience sees. 
the, the, the ultimate gesture of the performance is to, cut, to do it yourself, to search for, for a person who dies, you don't know, but, uh, but dies in very uh, precarious uh, circumstances next to where you are and to bear with it. And in that sense, this would be um, the ultimate gesture of the performance. It's not when you're watching uh, my report of the search. Um, but in, in when you take an action with the citizen and, and you take it as you try to be uh, as, as close as possible to, to, to these bodies. And, and I, I must say that from doing it now, I mean, I'm doing it many times, but also people who engage, there is a kind of transformative process in, 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 the, in the search itself, in, in, in what, it, what leads to this feedback eventually to come, because you have to. You are um, through the through the the, the, the the task of looking for for the grave of someone. You are a whole systematic uh, violence is unfolded to you, and so I I, I see all of it as, as, as part of this uh, quest uh, because it's not that I, I don't tell you visit this point. I tell you look for this point. They engage and it sometimes takes uh, several weeks or months to arrive to one grave. Uh, and there is something of, of taking the time and taking the, investing your time in this. Uh, so, and, and, and this is the gesture that you ask: Do we have a right, and, or, or can we can we touch it? And for me, coming as close as possible is touching or bearing respect to this someone. Um, and this, I think, like you said, also that there is a kind of a ritual there, um, because I mean it depends on the culture, but there is something about visiting the dead, uh, remembering them, which also these bodies are stripped of usually. Uh, so there is a kind of communal communal responsibility towards their. Forgotten graves somehow. And I guess we are going to be doing it also. Just try and we are going to be doing it also. When we are doing a say a forensic postmortem as part of the ritual of the mind or whatever. Or or when we can have a funeral, so we can use the things to do. As an artist, or else as someone who is political, probably we are just doing another arm of it. And there is some, another aspect to it that, that forensic is, is clearly embedded in in in, um, in the resolve uh, resolving a crime. Yes. And this is another word that is important to be put on the table in relation to this community because there is a crime which is not perceived as a crime, yes. and 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 thus uh, there is not. Uh, uh, a proper investigation taking, and, and and there is a kind of this gesture of of looking, this gesture of finding evidence, basically, to what led to this death is, is a kind of a forensic uh, sure. procedure. Absolutely. Yes, I I wanted to share um, that um, I feel a terrifying dimension of uh, of power um, among. Um, among the dead, dead, dead um, from, from us as humans and also from the figure of the artist. Um, so this is really um, uh, yeah, kind of triggering for me also because I'm an artist and I've worked on this list of dead people. And I wanted to ask you uh, how um, how would you say that you're also, I mean, if it's your work, um, giving us uh, a way to, to be as close as possible to also surviving people of all those uh, non unrecognized crimes? Because uh, I, I didn't know, and I haven't seen the case before, so uh, I didn't know that the, the, the next point was for us to make those researches, but. Uh, yeah, how about the survivors in your 
and it, it comes back to the to the uh, to, to to the the same question of uh, uh, for whom uh, for whom are we doing it? I think that acknowledging a, a, a communal death. Uh, hopefully, uh, we change also the relation to the related community. Uh, it's not something I can quant quantify. Uh, it's just a wish, uh, because the ultimate, also the ultimate goal of the list of united, and I think the performance trying to join it is to. Uh, to, uh, to change policies and, 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 uh, and the policies uh, that are causing uh, the deaths, uh, but also that are related to the uh, uh, I mean, to the, to the people who are still on the way uh, somehow. And I mean, it's a, it's a big, I mean, it's a big, uh, how do I say it? Um, it, it, it's, it, it's unleashing a, a, a certain choreography, let's say, uh, of, of humans, which, which, which is, which is uh, will increase uh, in the next uh, decade. Mm -hmm. And we know uh, just by watching the fires erupting all around the world. And it's already a lot of this might are already ecological To be a bit more precise to your, to your question, I, I, I think the hope that it will transform the, the relation that you have with, with the leading members of this community, of the micro community. And, and, this, and shift something in relation to, to the other as such. Because, uh, um, I mean, also, this ghost that we are reaching is, is just a kind of an image of the other, of the one that you're afraid of. Uh, and it's, this other will appear in, in, in various forms, in, 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 in various geopolitical contexts. Yes, I have Sorry. this question, which is, uh, I mean, uh, probably taking on what you all asked, uh, in, in practical terms, uh, considering you've been performing that for Necropolis for now four years in, I guess, different countries, um, do you have any idea how spectators were impacted? Do you have any um, reaction to, to, to this show which you want to share with us? I don't know. I mean, this we have to let <laughs> yeah. Who, who well, <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for one thing. No, but I mean, I, I also don't. I mean, I, I don't really like to generalize. Uh, of course, a, a collective reaction to because it's not collective; it's really personal. Um, I mean, to, uh, <clears throat> to people who are mentioning that they, they do acknowledge a, a different way of walking after, after the performance when, when this kind of architecture of, of death is somehow uh, unleashed around them. Um, to people that just contact me and say, can we, can we do it, can we engage? Mm -hmm. uh, um, so now <clears throat> I, I still didn't process all the information that 
that I gathered in this visit, but we, we have exact marks of more than 1,000 graves. Uh, and just for a 